It's finally here. Easily the most anticipated race of this season. This, they talked about it having teeth. It'll reach out and bite you. Here we go. History in the making at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Green flag is out. A great start for Kurt Busch. I think our mindset was just to have a good day, you know, and kind of accept the challenges. You know, we were good uh, from the cutoff line, but we were only four points to above it. So we had to have a really solid day. First little run, I didn't think we were great. I was really, really loose. And uh, rear drive, I was getting beat on pretty badly. So we backed up and, and went back to more like what we had in practice and air pressure wise and things like that. And the car seemed to get a little bit better. and. We were able to drive up at the end of stage one and, and get a point there. Kyle Larson is going to win stage number one in the inaugural Bank of America Roval 400. Hey man, got a point. Good job. That's one we needed there. Awesome. Need to be that idiot, though. The deal here is the 41, 42, 78, 18 are going to run a handful more laps in the pit. If we get a good start here, we're going to be close to the front, and we're right at making it to the stage. If we can keep going here, we might get some decent points out of this. When we did that strategy move, we had a pit and almost go to the back. But like we said before, I couldn't. we couldn't give up stage points. If there was a chance to win a stage or get a bunch of stage points, you have to do it. So we knew it might set us back, but we had you know half the race left to try to get us back up there. But I did feel better about our car and a little bit more confident um, when we were out there and kind of showed a little bit more speed and it handled a little bit better. Two laps left in stage number two through the chicane leader, Ryan Blaney. It would be big for him to get 10 points out of this stage. Great job, man. By 10, green checkers. Back up to the start finish line. Stage two goes to Ryan Blaney. Good job there. This is going to be what we talked about. Got some points, but we're going to give up some track position here. We got all day to work our way back. Really nice job. A lot to be determined in the closing laps of this race. Who will win the inaugural Roval race here at Charlotte Motor Speedway? Caution flag yet again. The caution is for Eric Almarola. Right around lap 69 or 70, caution came out. A lot of cars pitted because you were right on the fuel window to make it. Two or three laps short. You start looking at the point situation and we're right there around 10th or 11th. And you know we're racing the 14 and the 88. And the 88 came down pit road. And, and the way the points thing works, we pitted just to cover those guys. We knew if we were close to them or ahead of them, we were in. Uh, to the next round, and it kept us in a situation where we knew we weren't going to run out of fuel. Watching Alex Bowman being pressured by Ryan Blaney and Clint Trouble Boyer. Turn one. It was making me a little bit nervous. Personally, didn't want to see that caution with nine to go just because we were into the next round. That was my main thought. I was like, let's just get into the next round. That's all I care about. I was like, okay, it's getting down to the crunch time of the race, and people are going to start getting pretty desperate. A half a dozen laps to go. The green flag is at... Kozlowski misses turn one, four, five, six cars pile in. Ryan Blaney barely made his way through that wreck. Yeah, that was, that was pandemonium. We got a little bit of damage from that. It kind of skimmed 21's bumper, hit the wheel and kind of knocked it out of my hands. And, and I was worried, I worried something was going to break or was bent. I don't know if it's okay. Wheel seems straight. Boy, it looked like you barely got him. For spotters, take a look as best you can here. 11 said he'd look at him. So the 11 said it was not hitting. Okay. It looked like it was okay, but just a couple laps to go. We felt like our only shot was to stay out, and if it rubs, it rubs. But it was really not a question of if we were going to come in, you can't come in. Because if you come in, you, you just pretty much roll over and give up. Because we were able to stay out of it, for the most part, we were able to keep moving forward. And we had better tires than everyone else because we pitted without going a lap down, so now we've got 20 lap better tires than some of the guys that we were racing. By turn three, I was able to get to fourth really fast. So I was like, ooh, yeah, this is good. And we got a couple car buffer between me and the guys I'm racing for points. The one had a rough bust stop on the back, so I was able to get alongside him and pass him into the last corners. Once I got to third, I was just, I was okay. I was content with riding there. Top two guys were kind of far out, too far ahead of me to try to run down in two laps. I didn't want to make a mistake and wreck. Jimmy Johnson looks to the inside of Martin Truex Jr. They dive into the chicane. They touch. Jimmy Johnson spins. Martin Truex Jr. gets hit by Johnson. They are both spun out. I just saw a bunch of smoke. Here comes Ryan Blaney. I almost wrecked trying to get speed to make sure they didn't straighten back out and still beat us. <laughs> Holy <laughs> That was awesome. It, it does feel nice to finally get a win for this 12 group. This was a big time to do it, you know, in the playoffs. The thing we kept telling each other is all we got to do is win races in the playoffs to, to win a championship. A lot of these guys were on the 21 car last year, so we were able to celebrate Pocono with them. And really, really cool to win for Roger Penske and have him here. Just a, a really 
crazy day that happened to go our way.